Here we go then, racing is about to begin at the Genk circuit here in Belgium and these are the competitors for the second chance heat. Not quite good enough in the heats yesterday to make it through on merit to the pre-final but six places now are up for grabs and they've got eight laps of racing to look forward to. Uh, the grid lines up as follows, it's going to see Tom Nilsson to start from pole position in cart number 52, alongside him will be Luna Bloom in number 19. On to row two is then going to be Phil Doer and we've got Matthias Lund in there as well, the man from Denmark. Uh, row three headed by Mikkel Tigerson and Liam Crystal, if all those th front three rows can hold that position they'll make it through uh, to the pre-final but you can be assured there'll be a lot more action coming from further back as well. Uh, row four then sees Kamenuk Artsemi with Lucas Dunner alongside him. On row five it's going to be Hans Morin and Hamda al -Kabri. Row six is headed by Simon Schrogren and Mat uh, Matthew Latifi, uh, the Canadian who uh, has shown potential this weekend so watch out for him uh, to fly through the field from 12th on the grid. Row 7 then sees Pietro Wisnicki again unlucky in yesterday's heats to find himself in this second chance heat so he will be one to watch out for as well and Matthias, uh, sorry, Jakob Matthias Oja then starts alongside. Uh, back on row 8 it's going to be Andrea Volta and Marco Andreas Muro. Ryan, row 9 is headed by Valdemir Eriksson with Sebastian Esner alongside. On to row 10 is Henry Jung and Jason Ferrate. Row 11 sees Jumba Kovacs and Killian Meyer, who again has been in the wars this weekend with problems in warm-up, in qualifying, in practice. Hopefully, it'll get a little bit better today, but he's got work to do from 22nd on the grid. Uh, row 12 then sees Dirk Seyfried and Lucas Ask, and to round out the 25 starters in this second chance heat is going to be Mateo uh, Kaprik, the Polish racer, uh, to round out the grid. You can see the carts working their way around the first corner. A little bit slippy down there, so that's going to be very interesting on this first lap, to say the least. So watch out uh, for that. I think the rain has yeah, just about stopped for now. Uh, whether we get any more, we'll have to wait and see because the wind is fairly brisk. So if it comes in quickly, it should head out pretty quickly as well. Uh, the carts work the way on towards the back straight. Uh, in the meantime, the leaders of this grid already down towards turn seven. So they're hurrying along with this warm-up lap, trying to get the best of the warmth into the tyres. Uh, they'll have to slow down quite a bit now, quite a bit, because even the, the back of the field is only going through turn four. So I don't know what Lucas... Uh, sorry, Luna Bloom is doing here. I don't know whether they're thinking, uh, okay, they're going to get one more formation lap because there's been a few dramas where we've seen a, a few of the carts, I think, spin down at turn number one. So uh, Luna Bloom is at the head. He shouldn't be because uh, Tom Nilsson should be there controlling the, the pace lap. Okay, we may have lost, I think, number 52 uh, on that second formation lap. So one more lap will be given. 52 needs to catch up pretty quickly here if he wants to start from pole position because Luna Bloom is still heading the field in that very vibrant coloured cart the uh, pink fluorescent strip down the side you can see even on that bit of the track there it's very very slippy so the rain has left a, a slight indent on the track uh, so they'll find it very hard to get the grip there is number 44 heading his way round uh, that is the cart is a little bit lower down on the grid. Now everyone gets into position, which is nice to see into their correct positions. I think now we have got uh, Tom Nilsson back towards the front. So 52 should be there. And now they're told to slow down even more by the marshals on the side of the track. So that's the first point they'll get to be told to slow down because again, the rear of the field is only coming through turn uh, number two. So they're going to have to near enough stop if everyone is to catch up. So again, Luna Bloom told to slow as well as Tom Nielsen there in carts number 52. A little bit of weaving going on there from 45, which is Pietro Wisnicki. He is down on row number 7. Carts make their way through the final couple of corners, and still they're trying to catch up. Uh, one of the back markers is down at turn number 6. So, again, Thomas Liner is on track, just looking. In fact, he's on the gantry, ready to... Uh, switch the lights off. Everyone else from RGMMC is just trying to slow everyone down. The only one we've got there is 66, which is Henry Young. So another uh, six carts yet to catch up. So again, they'll be told to slow down as much as possible. Although the race will now get underway with those stragglers towards the back. The first race of the day is not going to get underway. Another warm-up lap. So it does mean uh, that those behind need to really catch up here. So they're holding everyone else up, which is not the best start to the day, unfortunately. Uh, one of those being number 51 who should be well up the field. Hamda al should be on row number five, but has still failed to get there. I'm not so really sure what's happened with Hamda. Um, she can't quite catch up with everyone, so Hamda needs to put her foot down and catch up as quick as possible. 
if she wants to start from first off row number five. If not, it'll have to be uh, down at the back of the grid. There is Hamda now, probably not quite happy with these conditions. You can even see there, through turn one, uh, she is really sliding. So not looking good for Hamda. And of course, without the, throughout this race, you'll probably see most of the drivers go for the outside perimeters of the track because that's where the rubber has been laid down across the course of the weekend and of course when it gets wet uh, that then kind of changes the main racing line so there goes Hamden nearly off the track there at turn number four but uh, she finds the grip now she's near enough caught up with the back of the uh, field as they work their way down on towards the hairpin at turn seven again still being told to slow right down by the marshals at the edge of the track and Hamda is now almost there so she should just about make it before this race gets underway still on that front row Tom Nielsen and Luna Bloom row two is Phil Doa and Matthias Lund and row three is Mikael Tigerson and Liam Crystal who travels all the way from Dubai to race uh, with this year's championship through they go then in towards the penultimate corner and hopefully this time we'll be ready for eight laps of racing the red lights are on the gantry, Thomas Liner in control of the lights, he'll jog back, he'll just about make it in time uh, to get these carters underway for their first race of the day. Hamda will start at the back, not in her respective position of row number five. So Hamda's at the back, everyone else there, again bumping and boring as they come through the final corner just to get as close as possible. Uh, one of those being Pietro Wisnicki and this time we are about to go racing in Belgium as they head down towards the first corner. Out front on that inside row is the place to be but watch out, it's going to be very slick and very wet indeed because the first three rows have all come together and it looks like our pole man has disappeared which is Tom Nielsen. He's gone for a big old ride now, that makes the uh, job for him much more trickier. He needs to get back inside the top six places. Uh, Luna Bloom has been involved as well in cart number 19 uh, which is not good news for him. Hamda's also a little bit iffy through the first couple of corners from the back uh, but out front by the looks of it it's going to be number 29 Matthias Lund who has made his way through up towards the head of the field here so a great start but we said there'd be dramas down at turn number one and it's exactly what's happened with the track being very greasy and not much grip out there it does mean you need to take it a lot more careful than normal uh, conditions so they'll all again tiptoe around the first few corners and then as the laps start to tick off uh, they should find a little bit more grip but down towards the right hander at turn eight comes our leader uh, which is going to be there 20 i think that's 29 rather than 28 yep it is 29 which is uh, matthias lund and then behind that we've got number 28 which in fact is phil doa uh, from that second row then we see number 20 in the mix which is a uh, yakub matthias Oja from row number seven he's made up a good 11 positions at the end of the first lap so he's really carved his way through now as he works his way on towards the start finish line uh, we've got also up there number 32 which is the cart uh, driven uh, by do, 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 looking at our starting grid uh, Marco Andreas Muro so he was a row further back and is already up into uh, what's going to be third place so he takes with him Jakob Oja and let's see what they can do to work their way through there's Pietro Wisnicki in cart 45 who's a little bit wide at turn number three just again about finds enough grip to go through and as you can see many running uh, very wide to find the best of the rubber on the track there was a move made there though as through went Shogren by the looks of it and the one that lost out was number 50 in that uh, Andrea Volta here is the battle for uh, what's going to be now second place Phil Doa is there in second uh, third at the minute is number 32 which is uh, Marco Andreas Muro and then of course he's got his teammate behind who started in front of him on the grip Jakob Matthias Oja and then just behind that watch out for Lucas Dunner as well in cart number uh, 14 who has come from row number four of the grid and also watch out for those carving their way back through after the uh, disappointment of turn number one the ones we lost at turn one were number 19 uh, Luna Bloom he's now down to 12th place and the other one was of course our pole man which was Tom Nilsson and Tom is down in 16th place so uh, quite a way from where they need to be but let's see if they can make further progress uh, there is a move down towards the first corner Pietro Wisnik is one of those up to 6th place now Henry Jung who has come from again near the back of the field is up there within the mix and also watch out for uh, the one behind that, which is the Swede, Shogren, who is in cart number 56. We've got number 50, who's making up places as well. And uh, uh, Volta, who's just about got his way now in towards the top 10 places as they work their way down through turn four. These are the front runners towards turn five. That is our second place man, Phil Doa. Again, still under pressure here from Marco Andreas Muro. Uh, those two have just about broken away. But watch out for Lucas Dunner, cart number 14, who is now starting to attack the back of the second and third place men. Uh, we can't really worry about the leader. He's head and shoulders above everybody else. He's kind of uh, leapt away now, has Matthias Lund. 
his lead at the end of the first lap was 4.1 seconds so no stopping Matthias Lund in this second chance heat he should be very comfortable if he can keep it on the track over the next four or five laps uh, down towards the final quarter though goes our fight for second still headed by Phil Doer second then for Muro sorry third for Muro second in this group for Muro as they head down towards the first corner can he make a move no he can't he briefly thought about it probably halfway down the uh, front stretch there but again he wasn't close enough and not quite brave enough in these conditions uh, just to stick your nose down the inside because it could end in a disaster in terms of you going out the race and you of course collecting uh, the person in front of you as well it's all about this race key to get inside the top six as long as you're there that will be good enough to get yourself through to the pre-final and start to score points for the weekend again a little bit of a better run from Muro as he works his way down the back straight but uh, Phil Durr was wise to that move coming at turn number five so Durr stays in second Muro still there in third uh, Lucas Dunner not making too many inroads in towards these two ahead of him uh, but do watch out for Lucas he could uh, bring a surprise uh, towards the closing laps of this race and then still behind them is going to be the cart of Jakob Matthias Oja very big amount of curb being taken there from Phil Durra but uh, he seems to be comfortable in doing that as so they work their way down towards the final corner still a very big lead uh, for the man out front Matthias Lund now has a six second yes six second advantage over the rest of the pack so the wet conditions are suiting him or the, the damper conditions are suiting him a lot better as he works his way on to uh, lap number five now there's a move for third place Lucas Dunner has got through so Lucas Dunner uh, moves up the order next on the list to try and get past is going to be Phil Doer in cart number 28 the teammates now start to scrap as well uh, Muro and Oja can Oja get through at turn four no he can't so he stays there on the tail of his teammate for now they work their way down the back stretch in towards turn five. Uh, this is the fight between uh, Pietro Visnicki, also in there as well, Jason Ferrate, and uh, also the uh, local man, which is Felix Varga. Felix is trying to work his way through. He's in the number 50 cart at the minute, and uh, Felix is doing fairly well. He's inside the top 10. Sorry, Andrea Walter, not Felix Varga. Uh, Andrea Walter, who is up there inside the top 10, but not good enough at the minute to get himself inside the top six. Uh, Pietro Visnicki is getting closer and closer so don't rule him out just yet uh, within this fight there goes the battle for third down towards the final corner still as it was Lucas Dunner, uh, Muro and Oja the one who has the final place on the grid for the pre-final at the minute is Shogren but look who's coming to the back of him now it's going to be uh, Pietro Visnicki he's in seventh place there goes the move for uh, fourth because down the inside line goes Oja and he gets himself past uh, Muro so the teammates swap positions and there is the fight for the final place inside the top six which is all important uh, for this race of course that is number 56 which is Shogram behind is Pietro Visnicki and also in there as well is Jason Ferrate uh, Jason has done well to come through uh, from 20th on the grid up into 7th place and there goes Pietro Visnicki just like that uh, no he doesn't in fact he tried to I think there was a, a cutback manoeuvre that came from Shogram so Pietro Visnicki stays in 7th and Jason Frate is also uh, doing well in 8th position. Philip Duller still holds on to 2nd. This is the battle we can see now on the screen. 3rd place Lucas Duller again goes defensive down towards turn number 8. Not letting any gap to be opened up there for number 20. Ozier to come through. And then of course watch out for Marco Andreas Muro. A little bit of a hand wave there from Lucas Dunner just to say don't try anything stupid. We need to finish inside the top six here to get ourselves through into the pre-final. So they continue for another lap and it's going to be now two to go for uh, the front runners. Still out front by the way just to let you know is Matthias Lund. He leads now by 10.3 seconds which is kind of unheard of in terms of the junior class. But uh, I'm just wondering if he kind of did a, a very quick switch to get onto wet tyres. That could be a case. Uh, if he has, that was a good call, but uh, it was a very risky one at the same time. Uh, there is our fight for sixth place, and again, a big move being taken there as down the inside line went uh, Pietro Visnicki. He now gets himself ahead of Shogren, who then fights back on towards turn five. Guys, be careful. All important to finish inside the top six, but only one of you, I'm afraid, will get through. Now, which one will it be? We'll find out in due course, because there's just under two laps to go. A lap and a half now, near enough a lap to go. Uh, for the leader Matthias Lund who's already down to the uh, final corner there is still a fight for third place up the road slightly is uh, Phil Doer by 1.2 seconds now 
So Phil's looking comfortable in second. Still looking good for third, fourth and fifth and for sixth place again. Pietro Viznicki is trying to get down the inside line, which I think he's just done. Uh, but again, the cutback comes from Shogren, who gets back onto the start finish line. And also getting through there is Jason Ferrate, who nearly makes contact further back, just to let you know of that fight for seventh and eighth place. Uh, again, of course, we're all focusing on what's going to happen for sixth. These three are now being caught as well by those three behind. So watch out to see what happens. Pietro Viznicki is back ahead now of Jason Ferrate on what is going to be the final lap. So if you don't quite make it inside the top six, uh, top six on this occasion, you're going to be out for the rest of the day. No more points for you. In fact, no points whatsoever uh, for you for the rest of the day. So there goes uh, Jason Ferrate, who is in seventh place. Still not quite good enough to get himself into the pre-final. He then runs wide as Pietro Viznicki tries to get through. Of course, Pietro started 13th on the grid, so he's made progress but it's not going to be good enough to get him through. Meantime, the leader is on to the final corner. Matthias Lund is working his way round. He'll pick up his first win of the weekend and, more importantly, gets him through to the pre-final. as a spin there for uh, one of our runners. I think that was possibly Lucas Ask, who has uh, dropped down. Yes, he has right down the order. It wasn't going to be good enough anyway. But into the final corner comes now Phil Dura, who's going to be second within this race. And, again, good enough for the pre-final. Third place will be Lucas Dunner in cart number 14. Uh, fourth place is going to be then number 20, which is Jakob Ozier. And then Shokran and Muro, also the final two, to get themselves on for the pre-final. They've done enough. It does mean, though, the ones that miss out are Pietro Viznicki, uh, Jason Ferrate, Andrea Volta, and also Tigerson as well, who comes home in 10th position. So a really good race uh, towards the front in terms of third on backwards because Matthias Lund came through with a 13, yes, a 13.9 second lead in the end over Phil Doer. Uh, those two get themselves through to pre-final, along with Lucas Dunner, uh, Jakob, Matthias Ozier, also in there as well as number 56, made very good progress, the Swede, Simon Strogren, and then also going through was uh, Marco Andreas Muro uh, to get himself onto the final place of the grid for the pre-final in the juniors. And then the ones missing out, as we said, Pietro Viznicki, Jason Ferrate, uh, Andrea Volta and then Tigerson, Tommy Nielsen and Luna Bloom as well after the disaster of turn one where he was kind of side swiped by our pole man there which was Tom Nielsen. Uh, both of those finished down in 11th and 12th places but a great run there from uh, our eventual winner Matthias Lund. He'll be happy to make it through to the point scoring races later on today.